Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I am sharing a card that I made for the summer issue of Scrapbook and Cards today. Um, I'm using the Rise and Shine scent from Pink and Main, which is completely adorable. I love all the little images in it. And I am going to be stamping on uh, Canson Montebal watercolor paper and I'm stamping it in Black Simon Says Stamp ink. This ink is um, waterproof, so I'm going to be able to do some watercoloring right over top of it. Um, so I did use a Misty to stamp it down, but you certainly don't need to. You can stamp it with any stamp positioner or an acrylic black or, you know, whatever you got going on. I picked out a couple of Distress Oxide inks, and I'm going to smush these down on my Ranger craft mat to create a palette so that I can do a watercolor background. So this particular um, video is, is called Mixed Media, and... Um, I just, that isn't something that normally I do, um, or I guess I don't think that I do, but I, then I was like, you know what, it's just mixing two different mediums, so yeah, I guess I do do that. Um, and for this card, I didn't even do any masking. I just thought it would be really pretty to have it just be the watercolor in the background, and then I would do some copa coloring on top um, to kind of set the image apart. So I am doing a wet on wet technique here, so I wet down the area that I wanted the pigment to flow into, and then I'm just picking it up. I'm using a number eight round brush from the Silver Brush Company. And I'm just picking it up off the craft mat and dropping it in where I would like to see those colors. I'm not being too, too particular um, about where they're going necessarily. Um, and I do have a tendency to like brighter color. Uh, if you don't, you can certainly go, um, you know, don't add that next layer. You, layer. you can just go a little softer. So you can see, because I haven't taped this down, my paper is starting to kind of bow in the middle, which means that the water is gathering on the edges of my paper. Um, I'm going to use that to my advantage a little bit because I like, um, it sounds funny, but like when I just paint it on there, I feel like the edges look very manufactured. Whereas if I go back in and kind of pull out some color here or there, I feel like it looks more organic. Um, and one is, I mean, they're just like completely opposites of being intentional. <laughs> um, but in order to have a more smooth background so there aren't pockets of color, I'm just taking a um, tissue or a paper towel and I'm just dabbing those areas so that it sucks up the water. But be aware, it's also going to suck up some of the pigment. Um, so this is all dry now, and then we're just going to go in with the Copic markers. You can This can apply to pencils, any other um, you know coloring medium that you have. Copics is just my preferred. That's my go-to. So I'm going to stamp this, um, or stamp this down. We've already done that. We have long since moved past that process. Um, I'm going to add the shading in for this as if my light source is in the top right-hand corner, just because that's how I'm comfortable. Um, you certainly don't have to do that. You don't even need to really worry about a light source if you don't want to. Uh, I did add a little bit of shading to his um, mouth and underneath his nose, but I'm not going to add the darkest color because I want that to look lighter. Again, his, his little mouth um, snout would stick out farther than his face, so there'd be some shading behind that. There would be some shading underneath his chin and where his arms are tucked behind his head. There would also be some shading on the lower half of his body. So I'm adding shading there as well. His one leg is behind the other, so that one will be darker than the one that is in front, catching all of the light. And I always work lightest to darkest, darkest back out to lightest. That's just how I feel I get the best blend. And on the lightest color for this one, I will go ahead and fill in the mouse with the um, C1 because I'm not trying to make him white. I'm trying to make him gray. While I have these markers out, I'm also going to add just a couple little like whimsical swirls to my clouds. I feel like that gives them a little bit more character um, and makes them look different than other people's clouds. Um, so I did it with the C1 first, and then I'm just going to add a little bit of shading in with that C3. Um, I like to kind of stretch um, the lines where the clouds like come in, where the line is drawn um, so that they come up. I like to add shading there as well, um, just to give them a little bit more weight. And then for the uh, rainbow, I'm not going to go with traditional rainbow colors. I'm actually going to go with the colors that I picked uh, to go with the background. With my lightest pink, I added some shading to his ears and then also his nose. And I'm just going to fill in the outermost um, ring of the rainbow. I'm going to add some shading from behind his ear and also behind the cloud. 
I am using basically just the tip of my marker and doing very light flicking motions. Um, you don't want to color in the whole thing. Well, I mean, actually, you know what? You probably could. If you wanted to color the whole thing in dark and not do any of the shading, it would still force it to pop out from the background. And that's kind of what our goal is here. I just like having the gradient of the shading. I'm going to do the same thing um, with the orange and the yellow. Um, and Copics are transparent, which means that they will layer over each other and they'll also layer over other things. So even though I'm adding the shading, you're still going to be able to see um, some of the color in the background. It's not going to be completely opaque. And that's kind of how I like it. Um, I think it's fun to let it, you know, almost look like it's tra transparent, like the light is shining through. Um, but even for your lighter colors, you might think, um, you know, that your lighter colors won't cover that and there's no point in adding it. Um, again, that's not true. So here we're going to go in and do the yellow. And even though a YO2 is a super light yellow, by the time we're done coloring it, you're still going to be able to tell that there was shading that was added um, to that portion of the rainbow um, over the background. So whatever colors you, you know, you want to pick for your rainbow, uh, you don't have to do these ones. These are just the ones that I picked because um, I really like the colors in the background and I knew that they would work to well together to, um, to watercolor with. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to use a green that matches and I'm very lightly going to use the tip of the marker to do um, a little bit of shading underneath where he's laying. And then I'm gonna do just random flicking around to give the illusion of grass. Uh, and then honestly, outside of adding um, a little bit of glitter to the rainbow, um, I used a, um, what did I use? Clear. I think I used Boy Costello. Oh, I outlined it. I completely forgot about that. Um, I did outline it. You don't have to do this step. You definitely don't. If you use a stamp positioner, you can probably over stamp it. I always do this step, especially when I do, um, when I use distress oxides because it does leave a like chalky finish and it will really dull your black ink. So here we are finally to the glitter portion of it. Um, you just want to make sure that you test firsthand to see whether or not your glitter pen will move any of your pigment. I haven't really had any issues with that. And then that's the whole technique for this one. So thank you guys so much for joining me. If you haven't picked up your uh, issue for this summer, then I hope you do that. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye.